Keith Lemon and welcome to a bit of Crafty Doings with me, Keith Lemon. Last year, which was just around the corner, you may have seen me make this little gizmo Christmas decoration. It's too bright, this light, and I'm on a very jaunty angle today. Let me get a better close-up of that. A little gizmo Christmas decoration. Well, today I'm gonna make a life-size 1.1 scale um, gizmo using the following things. Tin foil. Super scoopy. I'm gonna turn this light down. It's way too bright. You can't see me bits and particles. I'm using, oh, it's too bright, too bright, too bright. I'm using super scoopy. This is uh, my new fixation. It's my new sensation. Um, I'm using it a lot recently. Let's turn it back up again. Ah, it's too bright, burn the skin. I'm using this a lot recently because in lockdown last year, I learned how to do um, sculpting. I say learn, I just did it. Um, and I do it my own way. You can do it your way. I don't think there's an actual way. You can have a look on YouTube and see how old people are doing it and stuff, but I just go with the flow, make it up as I go along. I'm using Potter Select tools, actually. Um, the wooden ones, I really like the wooden ones. Um, we're gonna make Gizmo, I've got some references here. I normally make the body out of bubble wrap. We're gonna start with the face first. I've acquired some little eyes um, online. I'm gonna use these eyes and I will build around these eyes and that will dictate the rest of Gizmo's face. So let's make Gizmo. So I'm making a base for my Super Sculpey out of tin foil so I can bung that in the oven as well. Then I cover it all up in tin foil so no naughty fumes come through it and um, give me some sort of infection or some sort of disease from the Super Sculpey when I put my fish fingers in there. I don't want to be tasting Super Sculpey. I say 1.1 scale, it won't be exactly 1.1. It's how big I imagine Gizmo to be. Look at that cheeky gremlin looking at me behind me, laughing at me because I've got dungarees on. So I build around the eyes and then I will take the eyes away because if you put those in the oven they're just going to melt and turn into balls of brown puss. I'm not, I haven't forgot to put that camera on, that's just there. Uh... Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a big Gremlins fan, that I'm a big movie buff, so I'm always making something movie related, as you well know. Eyes, I think he's about that big, isn't he? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for that and build on this. So let's get the Super Sculpey open. Oh, look at that sexy chunk of pink. Now, I'm not a professional at this, so anyone who is a professional sculptor will say he's doing it wrong. I'm just like you at home, I'm gonna go having a bit of fun. It's quite tough to begin with. You've got to kind of massage it until it gets a bit softer. This always comes in under this tool. Of course, you'll be using this to make the hands, feet, ears, and mouth and eyes, eyelids. I always feel really conscious when I'm being filmed doing this. So I might go a little bit wrong and get the shape. I'm going for Gizmo from Gremlins 1, although it wasn't called Gremlins 1, it was called Gremlins, but I prefer the look of him in Gremlins 1. I'm probably gonna go in time-lapse now. It's a time-lapse! Just pop the face in the oven for 15 minutes, uh, 100 and where is it? 135 degrees. Alexa, timer for 15 minutes, please. Here we go. So this is how it turned out when I brought it out of the oven. It's all baked now. It broke a little bit there, but I've um, glued it and uh, glued in the eyes. And now I can get to work on shaping the rest of the head. Then I will mold off, should I say, sculpt his ears, hands and feet. And what a treat it will be. Let's get on with it. So what I'm gonna do now is secure the face to the tin foil with a little bit of hot glue. Hot glue guns, hot glue guns. Is it hot, is it hot? You'll hear me probably say F. Whilst it's getting hot, let me tell you a story. I can remember when I went to see Gremlins, um, it was a specific, I'll say that again. Let me tell you a story whilst the hot glue gun is getting hot. I remember when I went to see Gremlins, it was a certificate 15, and I wasn't 15, uh, but I can remember going to the to the cinema wearing Wellington boots filled with newspaper, wobbling in with these wellies filled with newspaper so I was taller. So I was as tall as a 15 year old, even though I was about 11. And I enjoyed it ever so much. I'm still a big fan of Gremlins now. Just, I just want to warn you again, I do have dungarees on. Right, I've got a hot glue gun to face on. Oh, that's lovely and hot now. So what I'm doing now is I'm using some spare bubble wrap to create his body. I'm just gonna build the rest of his head. I've got the front of his face, I'll do the rest of his head. 
Of course, bubble wrap is widely available. You've probably got some in your house if you haven't. I'm sure you can get some online. It's just normal bubble wrap you would use to bubble wrap something. What is nice about bubble wrap is though you can easily cut into it. And I much prefer this than using somewhat like paper mache. Always keep your packaging tape somewhere where you know where it is so you know where it is when you want it. Remember, you're not going to see any of the inside, so it can be as rough as you like. All going to be covered with fur. So I've only just started wearing dungarees. I did a shoot for Celebrity Juice and I wore some dungarees and they're really comfy. I've become a dungaree lover. I actually look like someone who crafts now instead of someone who's at the circus. No offense to anyone at the circus that doesn't like how I look. There we have it, Gizmo's little head. I'll put some wire around here. With the ears, I'm gonna put some wire in the ears. I've got some modeling wire here, which is really nice and easy to bend. I'm gonna try some fur on him because it gets a bit bigger when you get the fur on. So there's Gizmo so far, you can see sometimes the fur creates how big he's going to be, but you can cut into it and kind of shape it. Just cut by cutting into it. If, you, if the fur's too long, just give it a little trim until you've got the desired effect. So it looks like Gizmo from the film Gremlins, but you will get hair everywhere. It's masking tape and bubble wrap, uh, but with a really nice sculpted, super sculpted face, which gives him that sort of professional finished look. And I'm kind of just pushing it back a little as I put it on, so you don't get the edge of the fur. You want it to look like it's actually going into the super sculpted, so you push little bits of hairs forward. So this is where I am at the moment. Got the front of the face done, got some wire attached for the ears. None of the back is done. And now I have to do the skull run. Mm. Hi there, crafty pigs. It's day two, making little gizmo here. It hasn't taken me two days. Yesterday I had a busy day, I did a bit of crafting. And then I had some meetings about work because you got to work as well as doing crafts. But crafts are a lovely way to keep your mind at ease and just disappear for a, a few hours. So let's get back on it. Um, I've got one ear done here, one ear done here. There's a close up of the ear on this tiny cam that's over here. Ear, an ear, there's an ear. Um, so you got an ear, ear, and an ear. Ear. I'm going to make another ear, right ear, um, and then um, Gizmo will have two ears. So let's commence. This is fun, isn't it? Watch me do this. Let's cut there to me doing something else. So I've just popped his other ear in the oven to bake for 15 minutes, again at 135 degrees. Now I'm going to work on his little hands and his little feetsies. Got to squish it all together quite tightly because you don't want it cracking. The further I get on with it, the more messy my desk and room gets full of hair and everything. Um, let's pop some wire in him. See, that's gonna be his little hand. That's one little hand. So you just basically make little blankets to put around the wire. I normally just make like a solid super sculpey hand. In all the times I have made a gizmo, which actually I've made a couple, but not this way. The super sculpey way. So there you have a um, little hand, little gizmo hand. I'll make two of these now, obviously, as he has two hands. So I'm still doing the second hand. I'm just showing you how I create the um, fingernails. I just basically draw a nail around a square as such, but pressing in more at the nail bed, then flattening it out a little bit using this metal tool here. Right, crafty pigs, I'm now working on the feet. So I've made these frames out of wire. These are gonna be the feet. So I have a foot, two tiny hands. I'm gonna pop them in the oven to bake. And that's it for today because I've got meetings so I've got to go do real stuff. Two hands and a foot, one more foot to do. Body, fur, then it's done. And there's a little mogwai, forward slash gizmo. Hope best till tomorrow.
Oops, a daisy. Hi there, crafters. It's now day 115 um, working on this Mogwai. <laughs> That's not 115 at all. I think it's day three, but I've been busy doing work stuff. Uh, but that's the nice thing about crafting. Little bits of time aside, you can chill out and just make something at the end of it. You have um, an almost realistic um, gizmo. He's getting there. His ears a bit on the wonk. Yeah, let's continue with him. We've got all the feet done. I say all, to all two. Mogwai's have two feet. He's got both the hands. It's time to make the body and attach it, the head to the body and the hands and legs and then we should have gizmo and then cover him in fur. What I might do though whilst he's at this stage is paint his little nails and, and details and such. So to paint my little moulded mogwai parts, um, the super skull paint, I'm using Delta Creative acrylic paints. They work really well on the super skull paint. Also to finish off the little toenails, I've got some varnish somewhere. Is this it here? That's fabric paint. Bear with, bear with. I'll be using a little bit of varnish to put on the nails, to give him like a little glossy effect and also on his nose to make his nose look a little bit wet and sort of dog-like. Again, it's Delta. Let's do some painting. Painting Mogwai's toenails, painting Mogwai's toenails, that's what I do all day long. I paint Mogwai's toenails, paint Mogwai's toenails, that's what I do as I sing this song. Oof. I'm also going to put some details in the ears and paint his nose a sort of reddish brown colour as like in moving. See, can you see? Can you see? Can you see? That sort of thing. Do that with the other ear as well. Gizmo body is just bubble wrap with masking tape around it. Not masking tape, packaging tape. Then I'll just tape the head on. I was going to make it so he's got a movable head, but I'm just not so skilled. I go through rolls of packaging tape. Might have made his ears a little bit too big. But in Gremlins 2, his ears are massive, like bat wings. Right, this is where we housed him. He's got a body made out of bubble wrap. Uh, we've got the Super School Pay sculpted hands and feet that have wire on the end, which I just shoved, I made holes in the side like that and shoved it in and then taped it in. That should hold, I hope. Now we've just got to cover him with fur and jobs are good and And there you have it, there's Gizmo from Gremlins. Never feed him after midnight, don't get him wet and don't put him in sunlight. But most of all, have a closer look at him. Have a closer look at him. Gizmo made out of bubble wrap, modeling wire, super skull paste, some plastic eyes that I found off the internet and some spare fur that I had left over. If you're that kind of person that has spare fur left over, then yeah, you've, you've got all the things you need to do. Um, like and subscribe, I don't see you for the week. I'll see you through the window. Good luck with your business. That's it, really. See ya. Or subscribe and whatever. I don't know what you say.